Hey guys, it's May May and it's time to talk about mirror image stamping with the water media mat. You guys asked me about this when I did the live demo and I told you I needed to do a little practice because I wanted to make it where anybody could do this without any fancy tools except the media mat. And let me show what I've come up with. I think this will work great. Okay, so here's our media mat. It takes up most of the screen here. You can see the edge of it at the top. This center well, I showed this to you guys before. I'm trying to get it where you can see the whole thing. This center well is 12 by 9. Well, the truth of the matter is it's really 12 and a quarter. Can you see there's like a little quarter inch gap here? Not really a big deal. Here's what I've done. I've taken a piece of cardstock and I have cut it to be 12 by 9. So it fits in here pretty good except for that little quarter of an inch. And then in this bottom corner down here, I've cut out the size of a card. So this is four by five and a quarter. So you know this is like the matte piece I put on an A2 size card. It'll fit right inside of here. Now the reason I cut such a big piece of cardstock for this is I really wanted it to stay nice and smooth. So from top to bottom this will stay in the well really nice and I know where I can stamp. So basically what I'm doing is I can work and build my card in this space and I know that on the card front, that's where my images are going to stay. This is just simple, simple, simple for my brain. Now, you probably could just cut yourself a little frame to stick in here in this corner. That'll be fine. You might even could just draw um, if you wanted to. I just don't want to mark up my water mat. So that's how I came up with this, okay? So what I'm going to do is create a mirror reflection of this sailboat. So what you need to think from what I have seen, what I have researched, and what I have discovered is your reflection comes from here. Your actual stamped image you'll do with just your block on your actual card, but the reflection is what we're gonna get from here, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do my reflection in a gray color. This color is called Morning Mist, and it's a nice, rich gray um, pigment ink, and I will tell you this, I feel like pigment ink is your best option, okay? Because it stays wetter longer. So a VersaFine or a VersaClair or other pigment inks out there are gonna be your best bet for this. Now don't expect perfect images. It's, we're doing something that, you know, that's different. We're not doing something that um, it's designed to necessarily do, but you're gonna get a decent enough image to make this work. Now don't wiggle, wiggle is bad. Sit it down and press, and you don't really need to over press. You just want a nice good kiss on the mat and then lift that up. So that's gonna be my reflection image. So now what I'm gonna do is take my card front and using these little corners down here, I'm gonna place this into the corner and up against the edge and smooth that out and pick this image up. Now this works really well. You're gonna love this, okay? And having these little corners makes it super easy, super easy. So let me pick this guy up and show you what we got. Look at that. Now remember, that's my reflection image. So the fact that it's a little bit not perfect doesn't bother me, it's a reflection. Here's this, I'll show you how we clean it. I'm just gonna take a good wet um, baby wipe and just wipe this away. And if you do it quick enough, you really won't get up any staining like this. But if you use a color that might stain, you can always use your squeaky clean. I've used my squeaky clean on here a bunch and it's been fine. All right, so now I don't need the mat for the next part. Let me move this out of the way. Now for the next part, I wanna stamp my sailboat at the top. Okay, so that's my reflection, sailboat at the top, and this is gonna be what gives me the mirror reflected image. Now for the next part, we're gonna stamp the original or the image that will be reflected. Remember, this is my reflection here. So I'm going to take some Nocturne ink. This is just the black from the VersaClair. I'm gonna ink up my stamp really well. Again, this is a pigment. You could totally use VersaFine here. I just wanted to use black, but I thought I'd use this one because it's the same color, uh, the same ink family. Okay, so I've inked that up. And now all you have to do is just let these guys kiss and you can even overlap it somewhat because you can place your waterline where you want it. Or, I mean, pretty much for reflection, you're gonna have a waterline or glass or ice, whatever you're decorating or what you're designing. Let that transfer. Look at that, isn't that cool? Now all you have to do is add water. So now, and I'm using my um, water media mat again because I can clean this off. I'm gonna go to Distress Oxide Tumble Glass. This is gonna be the lightest color that I use. So where my reflection is, I'm gonna start there and just lightly color over my reflection because I want the light to kind of live in this area and then I'm gonna darken it around the edges of it. So all you're really trying to do here is establish your highlight and establish your water line. So I want my water line in this area. And this is just for me to kind of know where it is. 
as I'm inking. Now I will admit I am not the best at this so I'm gonna play and see what I get and uh, we'll see how it turns out. So there's my lightest color and just for good measure I'm gonna go ahead and put that pretty much everywhere and that way when I'm doing my other colors it'll have something to blend into. So there's that one. It's pretty cool already. Okay, and then let's take the next color, which is going to be for me, Stormy Sky, appropriate for ocean times. Let me change my little pad. Okay, so Stormy Sky. Now this color, I'm going to start bringing in from the edges, and I'll decide how far in I want to go based on how it looks as I'm coming in from the sides. Now I want to avoid the middle because I want that to be where the light is and where my reflection is. So even though I'm going to blend in, I'm not going to cover up my light color there in the center. See that? Now I'm gonna use one more dark color. And this one's gonna be Chip Sapphire. I think when you're doing this, when you get really dark around the edges, it really makes the light pop. So put my Chip Sapphire on there. And I'll show you what I mean. I'm really gonna concentrate on the edges with this one. And just work that in. Then we're going to blend it all together. Can you see how I'm dragging across? It's leaving these little, um, little tiny lines, which is kind of giving me a watery texture. So I'm trying to get those little lines in there a little bit because it kind of looks um, just like kind of water would have those ripples in it. Now let's work on the sky. Now for me, because I have the light in this area, I'm going to want the sun to come from behind my boat. If the reflection of the boat was to the side, the sun would come this way. If it was to this side, the sun would come this way. But for me, I want sun in that area. So I'm going to start with the sun, and I think I'm going to use this wild honey. I think that'll be a good color for a bright sun there. Just going to tap this in, and I'm going to be a little light-handed with this one because I feel like it's going to be pretty dark. I'm even going to tap it on my water uh, media mat and let that kind of be my starting point there because you see how bright that is. So I'm going to go behind the sailboat like so. Isn't that pretty? And then I'm going to pick up um, a darker color and go around it. So here I've got carved pumpkin, which is really orange, and I'm going to be very careful with it. So I'm just going to mix a little bit here on my mat, and I'm going to come to the edges or come to the side to get a little orange in the sky also. Just like so. And pull that out. Put a little bit on the water. And then I'm going to do blue behind there. So back to my tumbled glass. Now I'm going back to my chip sapphire and I'm going to do the edges and bring this back together. Now I'm going to show you what I'm doing here. So this is distress oxide and I can move it with water. So I feel like I got a little dark at the top. The other good thing is pigment ink can handle water, like watercolor, so I got a little dark at the top. So I'm gonna take my wet wipe and I am just rubbing it over the top and removing some of the color where I feel like I got too dark. Can you see how that's coming away and it's getting a little lighter? It's pretty cool that we can do that. It's also helping my boat to really pop there. Now, this is Brutus Monroe Alabaster Ink, I'll show you. It's Alabaster Pigment Ink. I love this white, okay? Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take the edge, just the edge, of one of my ink blending tools and get some of that white on it. And I want there to be just a little bit of white, kind of, not really um, white caps, but just some white in there, some reflection. So I'm going to barely touch it and just smear a little bit of that white out. You can go light at first and get heavier, but that will kind of give the illusion of light on the water. That's so pretty. It looks like an oil painting, doesn't it? And that white really makes it pop. I've got one more thing I wanna add. So now what I'm gonna do, I have a little scrap piece of paper here and a scrap piece in my hand. I'm going to mist this with this shimmer spray. This one's the sparkle. When this comes in a two pack, you get sparkle and frost. So I'm going to mist the water, but I don't want to miss the sky. I don't think I might, but I think I don't want to. So I'm going to lay this piece down like this, and then I'm going to mist the sparkle on the water. Ooh, making a mess. <laughs> That's all right. So after I finished this card, I didn't like the way it looked completely. So here's what I did. I went back and I held it in my hand and I darkened the edge just around the edge like this. 
and then I liked it. It just needed this little bit of almost dark distressing um, just around the edge for me to make it really pop. So I wanted to make sure I showed you that. I didn't want to do that and then you see thumbnails and go, how come it pops better in the thumbnail than it does in the video? This is why. I think this makes a huge difference doing this one little dark line around it. Then also when I put it onto a card front, it'll really show the separation between the image and the card base. So I wanted to make sure I showed you that. See how that really makes it pop? That makes a huge difference. I really like that. So one added step there. So there we go. A stormy sea. I feel like it's a stormy sea card with a beautiful reflection. The shimmer is starting to dry. So you'll probably see the shimmer in there and that pretty. I love how this card or this card front turned out. It's the first time I've tried to do the C kind of reflection situation. I've done this with um, like mirror image stamping where I've just mirrored some images like puppy dogs kissing each other or things like that. But this is the first time I've done something with the water and all that. So you guys followed along and it's not the best, but I'll do better next time, right? That's how we learn. We try and we try until we get it right. So there you go, guys. I hope you enjoyed this and using your water media mat to do a reflection. The thing about it is, for me, I just kind of need to know where I'm working. That's why I did that one little corner so I could know what my card front would look like and it makes this easy because there's no way for me really to see through like you can with an acrylic block, you know, when you're going to just stamp it down. There's no way to really see through with the water media mat. So this works out perfectly. There you go, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Um, if you use your water media mat to mirror an image, we want to see it over on our customer gallery at maymaymadeit.com. So be sure to share your projects there so we can see them. Thanks so much for watching. Talk to you again real soon. Bye-bye.